The first I want to turn to Yahoo Finance's Jared Blickery. Uh, Jared, let's just start with an end of quarter review. It is the last day of trading for the quarter, represents the last day for the first half of the year. Give us a breakdown of what we saw so far. Yeah, it's been an eventful month and quarter and also half year. So we'll go through it all on the Wi-Fi Interactive. I'm going to break down the sector action first. And this is year to date uh, sorting by performance here. So XLE is up 41 percent. That's energy. Then financials up 24 percent. Then real estate, communication services. That's where Facebook and Google live. And then industrials. So rounding out the sector action here, really about the value in cyclicals with the exception of real estate and communication services. Now, this has changed. So over the last three months, you can see the emergence of tech. Tech is the greatest gainer over the last three months, up nearly 13 percent, then followed by real estate, then communication services and energy. We know crude oil has been on a tear. That's been boosting that sector. But some of the other value sectors like financials, those are now underperforming. And when you take it down to the last month, you really see a different picture emerge. It's all about the uh, FANG sectors. we got tech and consumer discretionary. That's Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, et cetera, then real estate, then energy, then communication services. But to the downside, we've really seen the value trade and also the cyclicals flounder this month. So materials is the worst performer. That's down 6%, followed by financials, utility, and industrials. And I just want to show what's happened to the NASDAQ as a lot of these names have surged over the last month. Tesla up 9%. Uh, 9%. We know we, I've been talking about this stock kind of making a technical comeback here. Tesla's having its best month since January. ARC, by the way, the ARC Innovation Fund, having its best month since November. So a lot of the names that uh, flagged or were down over the last few months really got a resurgence. And DocuSign here, number one stock in the NASDAQ 100 over the last month, up 40%. Followed by Biogen, Moderna, Nvidia, and Splunk. So another thing we haven't talked about a lot, uh, necessarily, or I haven't, is the resurgence of healthcare. We've also seen also seen a lot of these biotech stocks come back over the last month, guys. You know what else is coming back, uh, Jared? It's IPOs. I mean, there is an IPO bonanza happening today on Wall Street. I know the big one, of course, is Didi, the the uh, Chinese ride hailing company, having a really nice uh, first day. Do you think that we're going to be able to hold on to this momentum for the rest of the year in the IPO market? Ooh, that's a big if. We have a ton of big IPOs coming to market. Robinhood is probably going to come up next month, a few other big ones, some unicorns, and a bunch of smaller ones. And I'll tell you what, I think that it is going to happen that way, and it almost has to, uh, namely because we are in a rising interest rate environment. That does not favor these high growth uh, companies that need a low cost of capital to operate. And so when you take that into consideration, um, we really could see uh, an incredible surge this year. And it's just because they have no other time to go. I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi interactive is uh, not behaving. So I'm trying to get that back up. But just want to go over some of the league tables or some of the issuance uh, that we've seen so far this year. Uh, $326 billion in global IPO issuance. And then if you include additionals, that's companies that are adding to their stock. We saw AMC, GameStop, and also lots of other bigger companies take advantage of low interest rates, $659 billion. And it's only the first half of the year. So this is going to be really important and interesting to watch going forward, guys. All right, Jared, let's talk Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, they did report quarterly earnings. Uh, give, us a de give us the details there. Yeah, really nice beats here. And you can see the stock. I got the Wi-Fi Interactive back up finally. It's up 7% this uh, today alone. And if you take a look at what they've done over the last year, and I'll get a, a year-long chart here, they've really been engaged in this turnaround strategy that especially Brian Sazi has been talking about. But the CEO, Mark Tritton, said in the earnings release, um, He's, he's highlighting the gross margins that they have been improving, driven by its expanded, expanding private label push. Uh, so some of their own merchandise that they've been selling, also pointing out an improvement to the company's e-commerce business. So the stock has more than tripled over the last year. It's up 200 percent. And you've seen, you can see here, it got kind of caught up in the GameStop phenomenon, the Reddit phenomenon. And again, we had some uh, some interesting moves here in uh, about one month ago. But this is a stock that is steadily making a comeback. And I'll just highlight some of the, the some of the numbers from the report here. Net sales of 1.95 billion. 
Um, also, second quarter net sales, expecting them to be higher. So they've raised their full fiscal year sales forecast to between 8.2 billion, 8.4 billion. It's a company that was kind of left for dead by many, um, and now it's on the rise again. So hopefully their turn up, turnaround strategy continues. Speaking of left for dead, uh, today's a big day for Hertz. They're exiting bankruptcy, and it looks like uh, the Reddit crowd uh, was pretty smart in hindsight, at least on this one. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, this is almost unprecedented. Let's go, let's go through the history here. I'm going to sort all these meme stocks by performance and go to year to date so you can really see the big leaders. It looks like Hertz is number five here, AMC's number one, but 618%. And you take a look at what this stock has done over the last year. Um, I remember six months ago or so during the GameStop phenomenon, and they were trying to raise capital. They were thinking about, as they were in bankruptcy court, going to issue stock. The SEC put a hold on it, says you can't do it. But um, I'll tell you what, one thing I learned today from some of the articles circulating, this is a 103-year-old company. Did not know that. I imagine they weren't renting cars 103 years, 103 years ago. They might have pivoted. But the stockholders are really getting a windfall deal here. They're also going to get warrants that entitle them to buy more shares for the next 30 years at a strike price of $15, uh, $13.80. And you can see the stock's already at $9, hasn't emerged from bankruptcy yet. Uh, could be a lot of happy investors who bought this particular stock. Not saying you should, but if you got in early, you might have a favorable outcome thanks to this bankruptcy court ruling. Yeah, Jared, I, I think that a lot of those Reddit, those meme trades, a lot of folks lost a lot of money. But man, if you were able to get in on some of those moves, definitely a lot of money to be made. Almost, we, we don't even ignore it anymore. We have to talk about it almost on a near daily basis. Thanks so much, Jared. We'll see you at the half hour.